What's up, YouTube? What you know? My name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. This time of episode 56, titled A Strong Sleeper, Komala's Secret. Now, if you do want to go back and check out the last few episodes where, you know, Ash did some one or 10 million volt Thunderbolt, where we saw Sogaleo, a whole bunch of different stuff, you can go, go back and find the playlist and watch through all of our reviews. As of last week, we're trying some new stuff in these reviews, and I hope you guys enjoy the changes. Let me know if you do in the comments below, and let me know what else we can do to make these better. And per usual, on every review, I want you to let me know um, what your thoughts are on the episode and what your favorite part of the episode was. This episode started off differently than they have recently. It didn't start off with a Lily recap. There was no Lily in the start. It went straight into Ash training with his Lycanroc and his Litten. So we talked about this in the last review. I think we have finished the part where Lily is the focus. Um, I think we finished with her whole little arc, the Solgaleo thing, it's all, it's all done. Um, Ash is training with Lycanroc and Litten to start. Kukui tells them that breakfast is ready and they travel into the ocean to get Burnett. Rotom is down wearing a water suit and they're looking at a little pukumuku. They go through, they eat breakfast, everybody eats, um, and Ash heads off to school. And Jigglypuff is seen floating above, which kind of sets up the whole episode where we kind of know what's going to be happening. But as we said, this episode's called A Strong Sleeper, Komala's Secret. So this episode was really weird. I was lost a lot. And like I said, this episode is mostly about Komala. That's the title of it. And it probably is going to be a lot about Jigglypuff because we saw Jigglypuff right before the intro ran. So the very beginning of the episode starts off where Komala is shown ringing the bell and hanging out on the roof, but then it falls off the roof. At school, everyone's training and learning about battling Pokemon, which I don't understand why Ash should be there. Like, Ash should be like, hey, just so you know, I actually uh, came in second at the uh, the Kalos Pokemon League, and I would have came in first if it wasn't for my water type falling in one shot to, my, to, that, to the fire type I was facing. So I don't know if I really need to be here. Like, I'm already one of the strongest trainers in the world. If you don't believe me, like, let me show you this 10 million volt Thunderbolt. I'm going off on a tangent, aren't I? Anyway, I don't, but whatever, whatever. Everyone else needs to learn, and Ash is there as well. So Ash and Litten are training versus Kiawe and Marowak, and as they go to fight, to battle each other, Komala drops right in the middle of them uh, and just distra distracts everything. And for the rest of the episode, it's all about Komala. You know, why is Komala always asleep? And is it really actually asleep? And Kiawe shows the group how... Yahweh? Kukui shows the group how Komala eats and apparently believes that Komala eats while it's asleep help keep it asleep. It makes you tired and helps it stay asleep. That makes absolutely no sense. Can't we just go with, no, its ability is it's asleep. Like, this Pokemon is always asleep. It's not the leaves that it eats that makes that puts it asleep. It's just that it's asleep you know I just didn't get it anyway uh, it goes on Ash says I'm gonna wake this thing up and he screams at it and you can see its face react he like he like crunches up and apparently that was because Kamala was having bad dreams not because what it heard so does that mean Kamala is never listening how does it battle does it just do what it wants on its own? Does it just dodge when it wants to? Does this? Uh, does it just attack when it wants to? What if you wanted to use a specific move? What if you? What if you wanted to use a specific? I don't understand this Pokemon. I thought I understood this Pokemon, and then I watched this episode. It was very not what I was expecting after we saw freaking Poipole at the end of the last episode. Did it take that long to get through an Ultra Wormhole? Come on, Poi Pole, hurry yourself up. Hurry yourself up. I'm trying to get some substantial episodes back. Anyway, um, Komala is given its little log that it, that it carries around at birth and it never lets it go, apparently. Apparently, apparently, apparently. I wrote that so many times in these gosh darn notes because it wasn't making any sense. Now, Samson Oak is there with the group and Komala is his. They're kind of going over how it met. 
Apparently, Komala was rampaging in the street as Kukui, or as Oak was walking by. He came to the conclusion, oh, this Komala lost its log. That's why it's rampaging in the street and you can't get past it. He tries to, he offers a berry that one of the other passerbyers was carrying. And instead of taking the berry, Komala jumps onto Oak's head and literally stays there for X number of days. I mean, just grabs onto his head and just will not let go. Assume they were doing everything together, which think too long about that. That's a little creepy, but Oak used to ring the bell by himself to take the little, the little hammer thing and hit it onto it until one day, Komala jumped onto this perfectly shaped, uh, the, you know, the perfectly shaped uh, log that's there. And then he started to ring the bell at the appropriate time. Apparently. I was so lost. Back in the group, Marowak starts messing with Komala. It gets better, don't worry. <laughs> Marowak starts messing with the Komala and gets attacked and Ash wants to battle Komala. Um, then it jumps to where Team Rocket's walking around, still talking about how they want to send all for the boss, all for Giovanni. They still want their promotion in Team Rocket. I have never worked for a company and I work for a pretty gosh darn good company right now. I have never wanted work for a company so bad that I wanted a promotion. <sighs> anyway, Team Rocket takes aim at a beach and they jump for it and it's Beware. What else did you expect? Of course it was Beware. So Beware is traveling, taking Team Rocket back and he stops at Jigglypuff standing there. And Jigglypuff of course starts singing and puts the entire group to sleep, marks up their face and we're jumped back to the school. Ash and Linton are fighting against Komala, gets smacked out of the way. Kiawe and Turtonator are fighting against Komala. Komala gets smacked out of the way. Now, it's important to note that Oak didn't order Komala to do anything. So maybe Komala's just doing everything on his own. I don't freak it. Uh, but anyway, everyone's confused as to how it's battling, myself included. And Ash goes, hmm, what if Rowlet could battle it asleep? And we have the most boring battle ever. It's even more boring than the Metapod battle from way back when. We see Sleeping Komala versus Sleeping Rowlet, and none of them does anything until the wind magically blows, and there's Jigglypuff. Right in front of everybody. <laughs> so Jigglypuff does what Jigglypuff does and puts the entire group to sleep and marks them all up. While asleep, Rotom was able to continue recording, and it shows that Jigglypuff attempted to mark up Komala, but wasn't successful, because he would just jump up, he would just dodge and hit Jigglypuff, and Jigglypuff eventually blew away. After they finish reviewing the video footage of Rotom, Jigglypuff rushes back, because it's so mad, because they couldn't mark up Komala for sleeping. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so Jigglypuff runs in and is like trying to catch Komala, trying to get it marked up. And the entire gang puts on these glasses with little eyes, um, so that they can fool Jigglypuff into thinking they're awake. Jigglypuff sings the song again. They all fall asleep. The glasses fall off and it, they mar Jigglypuff marks them up again. Komala still is unmarked. So they check it out again. Exact same thing happened. Oak, ta Oak suggests teaching Komala Sing for some reason. Apparently Komala can use Sing and the plan is to put Jigglypuff to sleep. But then all of the other Pokemon, Pikachu, um, Poplio, that's its name, uh, Steeny, even Turtonator all start singing and Komala learns how to use Sing that way. Apparently. Anyway, I'm, I was totally lost at this point. Jigglypuff returns yet again, and Jigglypuff is like, hey, listen, or everyone's like, hey, listen to our song, and they start singing. Jigglypuff starts singing. I'm totally lost. The whole gang falls asleep. After waking up, only Jigglypuff has had its face marked up. So the reason behind that being that Jigglypuff and Komala were singing together, so Jigglypuff never went to mark it up. 
but because Komala was using Sing and he can't be put to sleep, Jigglypuff fell asleep. Then Komala rolled over and marked up Jigglypuff's face. And when they all wake up and realize that Jigglypuff's face has been marked up, they're like, oh no, Jigglypuff can't see this, or it'll get so upset, etc., etc. So they try to avoid it seeing its reflection, but they have this bucket of water that they were using to clean their own faces, and Jigglypuff sees itself and starts laughing. I don't, I don't get it. It then goes over to Komala and pats it like to make truce or to make friends and then it flies away. And then Rocket, Team Rocket wakes up to see the drawings on their face and Beware's markings are all super scary and then the episode ends. So I think this episode was very important for the, the culture of Pokemon, for the, for the, for going forward in this, in this series. I think this episode was, was just absolutely monumental i think without this episode they just wouldn't have anywhere to go um so i mean this episode was just so great it was so high quality and the preview for the next episode which is episode 1000 of the pokemon anime that is absolutely wild we should do a review on every single one of them absolutely not but anyway in the review of the next episode um, it's another detective episode with Rotom being the focus. We get to see all of Rotom's forms, but we also see Marshadow. Marshadow was kind of hiding in there, so I'm kind of curious how they're going to introduce Marshadow into the anime. But anyway, that was the episode. Like I said, I didn't get it. I think it was kind of weird. I learned a lot about Kamala, apparently. Um, but anyway, let me know in the comments below what you thought about this episode and what your favorite part of it was. Again, if you did enjoy the changes that we're making to the anime reviews, go ahead and let me know and let me know what else I can do better. Um, there, This will be the video for this week. Next week, I'm going to try and get these Saturday afternoons. That's my goal for trying to get these up. But with the way my work schedule works out, anyway, it's going to get done. Uh, but that's going to do it for this video. If you wound up enjoying, make sure you hit the like button down below and do subscribe to become a member of the Domination Until the next episode, spread some positivity, be the light, and have a blessed day.